you know what happened to Bella? Well, but Bella is Bella, but your friend? Mm-hmm. She's the, she's not Anissa, she's the one who was stabbed. It's stabbed? I'm not really sure. Is she dead? I don't know. Um, she wants to take her to the hospital. Maybe no. What? I was just wondering. Well, hello, Oddballs. It's your host, Bobby. And your co-host, Lexi. And this is Oddities Oddities on on Elm Street. So, something happened last week. (laughs) I would would now like to formally apologize. (laughs) Um, Okay, so... (laughs) Lexi comes over to my house to do this, right? Every Friday. Every Friday night, we're here. And I have a child. (laughs) He's a young child. And he is... He's struggling to sleep, okay? And um, so, last week, our episode was cut short by the crying child and I had to tend to him for probably an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Lexi fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> I was really cool to like put my mittens on. <laughs> <laughs> you put mittens on? I do turn the heat down when you get I here know. so it doesn't kick on I so know. often. I'm like, well, I think I'm just gonna <laughs> Yeah, so we kinda had to call it a night a little bit earlier than usual and so we just finished that episode, and... You forgot to, like, press the record button. Well, no, it it was recording for so long that it automatically just shut off. Mm. And so when I came back from rocking him back to sleep, I didn't check. I just assumed it was still recording. Right. And so we just sat down and, you know, picked up where we left off, and we were missing that half of the episode. So we redid it. Mm-hmm. We posted it on Monday, and that is my restitution for fucking everything up, is <laughs> that you get two episodes this week, so. So, so. thanks, Bowie. Please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one today is quite a long one, mm-hmm. so let's jump right into it. Oh, and maybe we should, like, say we're doing it a little bit different this time we are we are doing it different so i have let lexi in on the secret for this week and she now knows what i'm going to be talking about and in hopes that i can have more to say than (gasps) (laughs) just oh my god (laughs) yeah so my dumb shit yeah so um i feel like it's only fair you know well i think I think I just didn't want to burden you with making you think that you had to. Well. Because you work full time. Like, this isn't your job, you know? You're doing this out of the kindness of your heart, so. Oh my god. I'm doing this because you my my best friend and, <laughs> and this is why you do hang up <laughs> As we established in our last episode, Lexi here is more of a true crime connoisseur. And... I am more of a spooky boo. So, for, for our topic today, we're going to do a little mix of both. It's it really is. It's so it's, fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, let's jump in, shall we? Our story truly begins back on June 10th, 2009. That is my birthday. <laughs> you know what's so weird? They had their birthday party on my birthday. I wrote that in my notes, too. I literally wrote that. Isn't it weird? The story was meant Meant for for us. Yeah, so... Oh, my God. I think I would have been, like, 13 on this Uh, day in particular. My 13th birthday. The day I became a teenager. (laughs) What a time to be alive. So, anyways, June 10th, 2009. The beloved creepypasta forums are at an all-time high. 
and a man named Eric Knudsen creates one of the most popular creepypasta memes that we ever got to see with our little eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Knudsen used the username Victor Surge on a site called Something Awful. On this forum, he posted two doctored photographs showing a tall, sinister-looking figure lurking behind groups of children playing on a playground. And attached was a short backstory. Eric claimed that the two photos were found in what he called the Sterling City Library Blaze. On the evening of June 13th, 1986, 14 children vanished from Sterling City. A local photographer named Mary Thomas managed to take photos of the event, but she was also reported missing that night. Although she was missing, her camera was left behind and police confiscated it as evidence. A week later, the Sterling City Library went up in flames. With it, a majority of the information related to this ca- this case was destroyed. I have so much spit in my mouth right now, I'm drowning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, copies of only two of the photographs were retrieved. And those are the photos that Eric was sharing on the Something Awful forum. The first photo was captioned, We didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But its persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. Yeah, It was a contest, right? It was, yeah. I think it was like a photography or... Like a Photoshop? Photoshop, yeah. Yeah. So the second photo um, caption said... One of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. And thus a legend was born. So, I mean, I feel like this happens with any new legend. Um, But when Slender Man came into the spotlight people were going bananas yeah for a while yeah i mean even still today people are freaking out over slender man but I, right but i feel like in those days like still got early internet right yeah it's like a new generation um, of kids right accessing all, this, all of this right, exactly mm-hmm. yeah so People started submitting their own personal stories and supposed sightings of Slender Man. And this just added to the snowball of Mm -hmm. the hype for Slender Man, right? I mean, obviously, we know Slender Man is not real. He is a work of fiction. Um, Spoiler alert. (laughs) Just in case you were confused. But all the stories going around the internet suddenly made him even more famous. I mean, (laughs) he is such a public figure. Well, he is. And, like, what I kept on, like, reading or hearing is he's just, like, the perfect thing to be, like, our generation's boogeyman. It's, like, he's so simple that you can, like, like, the blank face and everything. Like, you can just make him... To, like out to be whoever whatever is in your right. messed up mind mm-hmm. I think that's what's really scary is just the the ominous like unknown yeah the emptiness mm-hmm. that stuff really gets me it's like the scary movies that don't show the villain at all and it's almost scarier in my right. opinion because then it forces you to come up with Something Whatever is scariest to you in your exactly, own mind. Exactly. Right? And honestly, I remember when this all happened. Like I said, I think I was like 13. And even though I knew he wasn't real, it was still so terrifying. Spooky. Yeah. It's definitely not logical, but like what you said, is? it's just one of those things that just gets you, you know? Yeah. I feel like around that same time is when I started getting um, those... Do you remember you'd get like this the chain mail? Yes. yes. Like you'd get a photo of this like 
I don't know, something scary, some like, uh-huh. creepy woman or whatever it is. And it's like, forward this to yeah. 10 people. Otherwise, you're going to so die. And so You'll be gonna next. Come get you tonight. I literally remember one that was like this girl got pushed down a well by like her bullies in school or something. And if you didn't forward it, she was going to like come out of your shower drain like it and just like murder you. It- oh my God. That was, like, the prime time of the internet. It was. We will never be able to recreate Mm -mm. this era. Nope. We lived in a special time. We really did. But, yeah, so if you're listening and you're one of the few people that still have no idea who Slenderman is, I will make sure to post a picture on my Instagram so you can go check it out. He's thin. He's very slender. (laughs) And then you'll know who we're talking about here. So, yeah, but he's he is basically a super tall creature, like, freakishly tall, which I don't know why, but that in itself already scares me. Like, I'm the person that if we go to a haunted house and somebody comes out on stilts, I'm running for my life. It's like, it's just intimidating. It's not just the intimidation factor for me. It's just, like, the unnaturalness of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, like, it's not humanly yeah. natural, and it just... That it's type of stuff putting. scares me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's always in a suit. He, yeah, he, he wears a suit. Tentacle thingies, mm-hmm. creepy that little. He can. They come can, out like, of his back. Right. He, like, scoops Control up children. Them. Right. So, like, sometimes you can't see him in pictures. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to put him back in today. <laughs> <laughs> like a turtle yeah. in a shell. <laughs> yeah. It sounds silly, like, when it you're is. describing him. But the blank face too. It's, it's the, just I and just, just the way he's just like lurking mm-hmm. through the forest or like mm-hmm. in the background always. I, I don't know. It's obviously something that stuck with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be here talking about it. So t- it's been what fourteen years, Jeez. almost thirteen and a half years. So <gasps> he is still alive and well. So yeah. Um, since his creation, there have been dozens of movies. There have been video games created around Slender Man, YouTube videos. But all of that kind of kicked off with a YouTube series called Marble Hornets. I don't know why it's named that, but <laughs> <laughs> this series of videos was inspired by that something awful thread mm-hmm. about Slender Man. The first video in the series was posted on YouTube January, or not January, I'm... It's okay. It's January now. Yes, it is. (laughs) June 20th of 2009, so only 10 days after Slender Man's creation. Mm -hmm. And as of right now, there are 92 videos on the original poster's YouTube channel, and the series did really well. Like, I actually just checked it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I went back and looked for it. The very first video that they released in that Marble Hornet series has over 7.7 million views. Wow. So, yeah, it is still up on YouTube if you want to go watch it. It's literally just called Entry Number One. (laughs) So, Slender Man was making a big impression on the internet back in 2009, and among those seeing all of this content, the videos and the memes being created were unfortunately, also very impressionable kids. And, oh, I put in here Blair Witch, because yes, that's that what this reminds kept, me yes, of. Yes, that kept coming up when I was, like, doing whatever I was doing, researching. <laughs> well, I feel like, kind of like you said, this was our boogeyman. Yeah. Like, this generation's boogeyman is Slenderman. But I think the big thing for the generation before us was the Blair Witch. Yeah. Mostly because I I think a lot of it is because they did such a good job marketing the movie to seem like it was real, like mm-hmm. it was a real thing. These people really disappeared. And you also never saw the actors again in anything. And so you're thinking like these people like, are fucking dead. Well, even I remember watching it the first time and I'm like I'm like Googling. Me too. <laughs> Is this real? real? (laughs) Did I really just watch somebody get killed? (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, it came out in the late 90s, and I had older sisters, so I watched it when I was really young. Mm -hmm. 
And then I rewatched it as an adult to see if it really was as scary as I remembered, and it still freaked me out. Yeah. I love The Blair. I think it's such an underrated movie. It is. But with that kind of came out, like, with that movie coming out, it really brought new light into, like, the found footage genre right, like, like that became a huge thing kind of yeah thing like a like, pov right. type yes, yes that became a huge thing but yeah i remember like after watching the blair witch project i was scared to go in the woods for a really long time after that yeah uh-huh and i think that's the connection that i kind of made of my mind between this and slender man is that slender man is is similar in the sense that you never actually see the witch right. in Blair Witch Project. Right. You get traces of her left behind mm-hmm. in the forest, but you never actually see her. But it's just that imagination thing. That blank canvas. Around it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Go watch Blair Witch Project if you haven't seen it. It's an amazing movie. In my opinion, I mean, I feel like you either love it or hate it, but I thought just it was... Just give it a go. I thought it was very well done. So... And obviously, it's a classic. It it is. It really is. So, like I said, Slender Man is blowing up, and among those on the internet at this time are younger kids and teenagers that are easily swayed by things they see. And so, there are tons of kids out there who believe that Slender Man actually exists. Mm-hmm. I mean, after all, you do have forums where people are submitting their own personal stories just proving it's like a a Bigfoot thing, you know? The reason we still believe in Bigfoot is because people keep coming with new stories, new evidence. Their pictures and... Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're a kid on the internet, especially back in 2009, we didn't have, like, the fake news shit that we have now. There was no way to tell. Very different, right. And so, you know, you're seeing, like, all these photoshopped pictures and... I think, like, just the line between reality and fiction is just, it gets blurry. It's blurred. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. So, that is definitely the case for two teenage girls in Wisconsin. Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir were absolutely obsessed with Slender Man. They not only believed he was real, but they were convinced that in order to win favor... With Slender Man, they needed to pledge allegiance to him in some sort of way. And they thought that once they had done so, he would take them to live with him in his mansion that was supposedly located in a national forest in Wisconsin. 300 miles away. Just to add that in. Yeah, yeah. And in order to accomplish this, they would have to kill someone. And it's supposedly where... All of the creepy pasta people live. They all live in this mansion together. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a great place to we go. Sh- we should try and go. <laughs> we should do a tour. <laughs> so, I mean, they couldn't. They couldn't just kill someone and that's it. They had to do it in like a sacrificial type of way because this was for Slender Man, right? And they thought they had found the perfect victim. Fourth grader Morgan was sitting by herself at lunch when another classmate named Peyton Lutner approached her. She sat down with Morgan so that she didn't have to eat alone. Which is already like... God bless her. what What a sweet soul she has. Yeah, truly. And the two of them became best friends. They were inseparable for a long time. They would go roller skating together, play dress up, and were really just doing the wholesome things that Mm -hmm. most kids do at 12 years old. But by the time the two of them were in sixth grade, their relationship started to change. Morgan had befriended Anissa Weir. Anissa was initially the one who showed Morgan the creepypastas that included Slender Man. And together, the two of them became obsessed like I said. Peyton was not a fan of this. She thought Slender Man was scary. She wasn't into it. And so, unfortunately, that kind of pushed Peyton 
away from Morgan and drew Morgan and Anissa closer together because they had this bond over right. well, Slenderman. And um, Anissa was new. Like, she just moved there. Yeah. And uh, Morgan and her met on the bus. And from what I heard is, like, she was very jealous of mm-hmm. um, Peyton and Morgan's relationship and was, like, not necessarily the nicest person to yeah. Peyton, like, trying to, like, shove her out of the way so yeah. that she could step in as... Well, and I think she was kind of jealous of her, too, because she was getting a little more popular as mm. they went on into middle school. Mm-hmm. And I think... Um, you know, it was pretty clear that Morgan didn't really fit in with the rest of her classmates and Anissa would stand up for her. And so that also really bonded the pair yeah. together, you know. That'll do it. Um But yeah, it it also became more evident that Morgan was really struggling mentally and would just do things that were a little bit concerning for someone her age. She started having outbursts in class and at one point she was even suspended for bringing a hammer to school. But I think it's kind of one of those things that you don't really, you don't really realize it until something bad happens. And then you look back at it and you, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, You're like, wow, we really missed it. Uh So in sixth grade, Peyton started to branch out and make new friends. And Like I said, Morgan and Anissa were a little bit jealous because of this. But on May 30th, Lexi's birthday now, (laughs) Morgan was having a birthday party, which was also supposed to be a sleepover. Um, She was hosting it at her house, and she invited both Anissa and Peyton. She was celebrating her 12th birthday, which had actually happened back on the 16th, but The party itself took place two weeks later. At Morgan's party, the three of them spent hours roller skating. It was a Friday night, so it was probably probably popping. I miss those days. Wish I could go back. (sighs) So yeah, they were popping off at the roller skating rink, and then they went back to Morgan's place. According to Peyton, she thought it was really weird that Morgan didn't want to stay up all night because... I guess with all of their previous sleepovers, Morgan always wanted to pull an all-nighter. And the next... That's a lot of... Yeah. We're like, oh my gosh. We used to actually, like, me and my friends, we would, like, challenge each other to stay up for, like, 72 hours straight. Because I guess... hallucinate. You were supposed... Yeah, I was going to say, I guess after that point, you're supposed to, like, hit the point of insanity. (laughs) Don't know why you would want to do that, but... But they were like, nope, let's, let's sleep. Yeah. Which was odd. That was odd for her, I guess. And the next morning when Peyton had woke up, neither Morgan or Anissa were in the room with her. So she went downstairs and saw that they had already started eating breakfast without her. There was already kind of a weird vibe Mm -hmm. going on. A little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. After hanging out a little more in the house, Morgan asks her mom if they can go to the park. Which usually her mom would say no because they were still... A little bit young, you know. But because it was her birthday party, she agreed to let them. And so the three of them went. As soon as they got there, they go into the bathroom where a fight breaks out, like, out of nowhere. Right when they walk inside, Anissa hits Peyton's head against the concrete wall in the bathroom in an attempt to knock her out. Because Anissa was, like, trying to get her to sleep. Yeah. But... Peyton was like, uh, no. <laughs> like, what? Awkward. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, so, and that's the thing is, I don't know for sure if Peyton knew that they were intentionally trying to knock her out. Uh-huh. Um, But I think Morgan held Peyton in place so that Anissa could slam her head against the wall. So clearly they had a plan going on. Morgan began having an anxiety attack. She was pacing and singing to herself outside of the bathroom. Anissa sends Peyton out to go do whatever. 
and Anissa is comforting Morgan, trying to get her to calm down, she ended up having to pet Morgan. Like a cat. Like a cat. To get her to calm down. So there's a little little quirky detail. So yeah, um, I was wondering too, like, Peyton staying and just like trying to like stick it through for her friend yeah i don't know if it's that terms or i don't know or if she's concussed <laughs> confused if she's scared about what just happened so she just like complies mm-hmm. so that hopefully they don't hurt her or like i really it's also one of those things like where else are you gonna go right. you know you can't just like hop in a car and drive away right. so how ha- i mean it's almost like how fawning, would, like yeah, yeah. Right? And how would you even react? You're 12 years old, you know. You don't. I have no idea what I would do in that situation. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So the three of them decided to keep hanging out. They move into the woods where Morgan and Anissa suggest that they all play a game of hide and seek. Anissa told Peyton to go into the woods and cover herself with leaves and sticks to hide. So she goes and does this. Again, she might just be, like, complying just to not to piss them off anymore and get her head bashed in. Morgan starts counting. And Peyton can hear Morgan and Anissa talking, but she's not able to make out anything that they're saying. And then, all of a sudden... Morgan is crouched down over Peyton with a kitchen knife in her hand. And right before she begins stabbing Peyton, she said, quote, Don't be afraid. I'm only a little kitty cat. And then she, like, went down and whispered it in her ear. I'm so sorry. Did she? I didn't read that. Oh, my God. That gives me chills. Yeah, I mean... It is so just matter of fact. Yeah. Like, when they're um, being interrogated, and, like, especially Morgan, just the way she's, you know, like, she's telling the detective about how her and Anissa talked about their new plan yeah. To have them, you know, Anissa and Peyton are going to go hide first. Morgan's going to be the seeker. And Anissa's going to try to get Peyton to go out as far as possible and, like, plant her, basically. And the detective asked, like, what did you do after uh, the two of them went into the woods? And she's like, I went to find them. Yeah, it's like she's just numb. Yeah. To, like... Well, and then I also heard a lot of, like, her parents kind of were a little bit confused, maybe, concerned, because, um, like, they specifically remember being nervous about showing her Bambi, the her movie. Parents? Yes. And they said that they watched Bambi with her, and, like, you know, I was a hot mess watching the part where Bambi runs away and the mom is shot. Mm-hmm. She's very sad, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I guess Morgan was mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, go. Like, save yourself. <laughs> like, not sad, not anything. Yeah. Just, just you know, hindsight things of like, yeah. oh, yeah, there was not a whole lot of uh, empathy. Exactly. There. And, again, it's something that you don't really think adds up to anything until. Or you don't want to think. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and we will get into more of like the mental Mm -hmm. illness aspect of the whole case and talk about her diagnosis. But yeah, so after leaning in and whispering that, I guess, she immediately begins stabbing Peyton. And while Morgan was stabbing Peyton in the arms, the legs, the torso... Anissa is just standing there watching. So what Peyton didn't know is that while she was hiding under the leaves and she was trying to decipher that conversation that Morgan and Anissa were having, 
they were actually arguing about who was going to stab her. Yeah, because Morgan didn't want to. Yeah. But Anissa was like, well, it has to be, like, someone you love. So, like, you guys are best friends. I can't do it. You have to. Yeah, because it's a sacrificial killing. Right. And I guess right before she started stabbing Peyton and before she made those quotes, Anissa said, Kitty now, go ballistic. Go crazy. Go ballistic. Yeah. Because Morgan was like, I'm not going to do it um, like unless you specifically tell me to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Anissa kind of gave instruction and Peyton was stabbed 19 times. Even after being attacked in such a brutal way, Peyton still attempted to stand up, but she couldn't see. Probably from blood loss, I imagine. Mm -hmm. So Anissa comes up to Peyton, grabs her by the hand, and tells her to lay down in order to help the bleeding. You're right. Yeah. Slow down the bleeding. Mm -hmm. That is such a... I don't know. That gets me. Like the... Every time I hear a story of somebody getting killed, but it's, like, in between the the murderer will, like, stop and try to assist them while that person's dying, it's, like... What is I going don't know. on? It just... In, right. Yeah. I don't know. But... So, after telling her to lay down, Anissa told Peyton that her and Morgan were going to go get help. But, thankfully, for her, her sake, Peyton didn't wait for them to come back with help. Because they never came. And at this point, she's like, oh, I don't think they want to help me. So, despite her horrible injuries, Peyton somehow mustered up the strength to pull herself up and make her way out to a nearby road where she got the attention of a cyclist. This cyclist, Greg Steinberg, was just out for what he thought was a lovely little bike ride. And instead, he stumbled upon... Peyton's bloody body laying in a patch of grass. Well, and and he did an interview and he said that he's a frequent biker and mm-hmm. he always took the same route. The same path every day. Except for this one day, he's just like, I'm going to take this different way. Like, yeah. How? Not a coincidence. Interesting. That yeah. That's makes like. You think like we're all connected. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that. Yeah. So, Greg is ultimately the one who calls for help, and thankfully, help arrives in time to save her from bleeding out. But she was, she had kind of faded in and out the entire ambulance ride, which, thankfully for her, she doesn't remember a lot of the stabbing. Um, Yeah. A lot of the details, which is, you know, probably a good thing. For the best. Yeah. So, she said that she does remember seeing her mom in the hospital as the nurses were counting her stab wounds, which, what a terrible thing to have to go through as a mother to, ugh, I can't imagine. Mm -mm. So, like I said, she suffered 19 stab wounds. Most of the stab wounds had only damaged soft tissue, but the two that she took to the torso had hit major organs. One cut through her diaphragm, damaging her liver and her stomach, and the other nearly penetrated her heart. The doctor who operated on Peyton said that if the knife if the knife had gone the width of a human hair further, she wouldn't have lived. She underwent a six hour surgery and when she was first waking up, the first thing on her mind was where her attackers were. And she was overcome with relief to hear that police had already captured both Morgan and Anissa. Which, okay. It's like all of their planning that they do, some of it is like so cunning. And then some of it is like, well, they were going to walk 300 miles yeah. after to get to the mansion and they were just going to stop at Walmart to get some fruit snacks. As... But that's just like the reality of a 12 year old's mind. And that's you just know? so, I can't even fathom. Like, yeah. To be, because you're, yeah, you're a 12 year old and you have these stupid thoughts. Mm-hmm. But then, like, that's normal. Yeah. Adding in the 
the murder. Right. Yeah. It's it's just like you those things hearing Anissa talk about getting the fruit snacks. Like just like makes me it's like Yep, they're twelve. They are yeah. they are twelve. They are not It's hard to remember when you sit and listen to like the details of the brutality yeah. of what they've just done to this girl, a girl that was supposed to be their friend. It's hard to remember these are they're not even teenagers. No. You know? Twelve. Twelve years old, and to think that they not only are capable of doing something like this, but planned it out. And had different, like, several different plans. Oh, and yeah. And were planning it, like, for months. Six months, to be exact. Yep. Yeah, and, and like you said, with without, obviously, without stabbing their friend, I feel like all the rest is pretty normal... The fuck is that? What? What is that? It's coming from here, yeah? It's freaking me the fuck out. That's for yeah, sure. I don't like that at all. Um, hello. Well, we didn't we're, die. We're back. Um, I feel a little bit better now. I think it's just an animal, but that sounds like a pretty big beefy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or is it slender? <sighs> all right. Uh, I don't even remember where we were. I don't know. Oh, God, that got me all shook up. I I ain't gonna sleep anytime soon. Also, when I I'm like I gotta pee, but <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, don't yeah. leave me. Well, no. So, like I like I was telling you, I thought for sure that it was the slider door being opened, which, in my mind, I'm thinking, how the fuck am I gonna run past that room to grab my child? <laughs> like my brain was already making plans. Can't I just tell know you. that I clenched <laughs> and my <I> ass cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um uh, <laughs> You're like out of breath. <laughs> I don't know. I wish that you guys could have seen the horror. <laughs> In our faces. Yeah, that... And we, like, locked eyes. And we're like, this is it. It was like we were communicating without saying anything. Like, did you hear that? <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> we're gonna die. Yeah, okay. Well, what a lovely, <clears throat> lovely night. <clears throat> so, Morgan and Anissa were captured. Oh, yeah, because they were... We were talking about them being 12. Weren't they found sitting along the highway they were found along the highway i don't know if they were sitting or standing <laughs> <laughs> but I, not I that that's important <laughs> information but yeah yeah so they did go to the local walmart mm -hmm. and they cleaned themselves up in the bathroom grabbed some fruit snacks for energy yeah. i heard uh, anissa like saying something about like Getting some, you know, like sugar and maybe like something kind of sort of healthy. <laughs> wow. For hours, like yeah, and they walked for five hours. And and just off fruit snacks. Um, I can't remember who, but I think it was Anissa. Like one of the first questions she asked during her interrogation was, "Um, can I ask a quick question?" Do you know like how far we walked? Cause I'm just like I'm not really athletic, and I just want to know. <laughs> oh my god! Like how like you're disassociated? Yeah. Like that is wow to have that be at the forefront of your mind. Yeah. After yeah. the 19 stabs. That Excuse is... me. 
Wow. And and I don't know if you heard Morgan uh, explain the stabbing, but she said that she felt nothing. It felt like air. It felt like air. Just stab, 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 stabby, stab. stab. Yep. Yep. As she's doing the motions mm-hmm. in front of the detective. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being a detective and just being like... Bamboozled. Hello, is this real life? Yeah. And he like had a ch- uh, child close to their age. Oh, God, I can't imagine. Nope. Mm-mm. So, I guess the five hours of walking was, you know, part of the plan to get to... Slender Man's mansion. That was a rule. Just keep walking. Yeah. Kind of like you were saying, Morgan showed no remorse whatsoever during her interview. I honestly don't know if she's capable of understanding, like, the gravity of no. this situation. She doesn't. And one of the first things that she asked was if Peyton was dead. Mm-hmm. And then said, I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Yeah. And she also told investigators that they had no idea how hard it was to keep their plan a secret. They would use code words. They made up like a... Yes. yes, Like... Which is crazy because, again, it goes back to, like, how detailed and, like... Some of it How is so thought out. Thought, yes. Yeah. And then some of it's like, yeah, we're going to walk it... 300 miles to the mansion yeah. in the so, middle of the... Yeah. It's just... It's wild. So dissociated. Mm-hmm. That's truly all I can keep thinking of. Their plan to kill Peyton, like I said, had been going on for over six months at this point. Mm-hmm. And not only did they have the plan that they eventually followed through with. They had plan A, a plan B, a plan C. And like you were saying, they would write emails to each other, write notes to each other, and they would talk in public about this plan using code words. And they were just obsessed with the Mm -hmm. idea of making this come true. So plan A was actually to kill Peyton while she was asleep at Morgan's house mm-hmm. during the birthday party sleepover. We're just going to throw a blanket over her so she looks like she's sleeping as we run away. Yeah, and <sighs> they ultimately agreed that they were too tired to follow through with plan A because they used up all their energy roller skating. No, Morgan, Morgan's in the interview, interrogation, whatever, she's like, I just wanted to give her one more morning. And then she also what? said, oh my God, it was just the way that she says it. It's like, I wanted to see if we could, you know, maybe push it off and not do it at all. But it seems that's not how it worked out. It's not verbatim, but like something along those lines. Oh and the way that she God. says it, she, she just, she sounds so young, but so matter of fact, mm-hmm. so like nonchalant, like, Yeah. We, uh, we were going to stab her and then walk to the mansion and live our lives there. That is... Oh, my God. It's like, just... Can you imagine looking a 12-year-old in the face and hearing her say that to you? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I can't uh, imagine, like, I'm trying to think back of 12-year-old Lexi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was stupid, but, like, not in the stab someone yeah well and it's kind of a sad case too because i think about this a lot actually i know that it sounds weird but i think about like how lucky i am to be of sane mind to not like have to struggle with what's real what's fantasy what's in my head delusions because that would be such a scary place to live you know living inside of the mind of someone who doesn't know what's what's real and what's not that's a really scary thought and so yeah it's just it's kind of sad that it turned out that way for her you know to be so young yeah. Two. Yeah. Plan A was to kill her at the sleepover. 
Plan B was to kill her in the bathroom at the park. So when they had slammed her head into the wall, they were hoping that she would, you know, fall unconscious and they could kill her Because they didn't... Then. You weren't supposed to look her in the eyes. Right. That's what Anissa said, I think, right? Yeah, that's what she read online. Yeah, she, she read that it was easier to kill someone if you knock them out first and then to not look them in the eyes while doing it. Because you'll see yourself and you don't want to kill yourself. And Morgan thought that that was a great plan because she knew that the bathroom had a drain for the blood, supposedly. So he slammed her head into the concrete, hoping it would knock her out, make it easier to kill her. But obviously that plan failed because they didn't hit her head hard enough, which is kind of awful to say, but that's the reality of it. That is when they had to resort to plan C, which is the plan they followed through with. And yeah, both Morgan and Anissa, they said some really scary things in their interviews. Um, I do highly suggest going and watching them if you want to learn more about it. And to hear how specifically Morgan sounds Mm -hmm. as she's talking. It's like she goes from being like, she doesn't even want to say who Bella is. Yeah. To the... One I stab. That is, yeah, that's good to know. If you're going to listen to the audio of the interrogation, it is important to know that when they refer to Bella, they're talking about Peyton. That's Peyton's nickname is Bella. Her middle name is like Isabella. Yeah. I read that she also said people who you trust become very gullible. It was it's sort of sad. sad. <sighs> I... Yeah, because Peyton, um, as she was, like, being stabbed by Morgan, I was like, I trusted you. Oh. Yeah. She said that? Yes. That's, that's very sad. <sighs> what a terrifying moment she must have went through. Surreal. Yeah. Morgan also claimed she couldn't remember who actually did the stabbing and tried to pin it on Anissa. She said that Anissa told her that they had to follow through with it because a man she knew would kill their families if they didn't. Obviously, that man being Slenderman. The investigator said the girls aimed to show Slenderman they were worthy by killing someone. But Anissa said that it was Morgan who said they needed to kill Peyton and that she was the one who found out that Slenderman had his big mansion in the Mm -hmm. middle of Nicolette National Park. So about two hours into their interviews, the investigator shares the news that they didn't kill Peyton. She had survived. When Anissa hears this, she assumes that it means that they're no longer in trouble. Can we go back to just class? Yeah, and that again is just one of those things that speaks to, like, you're talking about 12-year-olds. Just They have no no understanding of right you know so, like beyond naive yeah but it's like you're supposed to be you're yeah 12. exactly exactly so that is just one of those things that kind of gives you it's like it a little, snaps you back to realize right you're not talking about like these hardened criminals that you know what i mean like right. you're or talking even about like an 18 year old yeah like that's the still, difference right? between it's right i mean like six years but like when you're that young, like, that is a drastic difference. Yeah, exactly. When Morgan's room was searched, there were over 50 hand-drawn pictures of Slender Slenderman, which, I mean, would honestly, this would be, like, a normal thing if it hadn't led to murder. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, they also found some inside of her locker at school. They found mutilated dolls in her room. Again, I wouldn't... I mean, it's, like, kind of... It reminds me of, like, the West Memphis Three. Trying to blame people who enjoy the macabre. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And have that be the reason why they are the way they are. Not just, like, they are the way they are and they like this. Yeah. Yeah, that is definitely 
I mean, I feel, I feel like that's just, um, also a lot of it has to do with, like, the media. Well, that's exactly it. Yeah, when they get a hold of some of the details and they're like, oh my god, he played, like, violent video games or he watched scary movies or, like, I do that shit. I'm exactly. not a fucking murderer. You know what I mean? Like, it, uh-huh. it's, a lot of it is those types of things partnered with mental illness or trauma uh-huh. or a history of whatever, you know? Right, and it just plays into almost, like, the stereotypical, like, devil worshippers. Like, I thought mm-hmm. you guys were devil worshippers because you are all black and yeah. listened to rock music. Like, yeah. it's basically the same thing. Like It really is. It, it's, it's very frustrating. And, like, yeah. the West Memphis 3, that case is, you'll have to. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that eventually. I mean, when I was little, we used to, like, take Barbie's heads off and cut their hair off and do all sorts of weird shit. Again, I feel like that's just a normal thing that you would do, but partnered with, you know, the... And it's easy for the media to, like, grab onto. It's oh, like, yeah. Yeah, listen to this. This is what they did. Like, yeah, yeah. people eat that shit up. Exactly. Just easy. So, what's not so normal, though, is the searches she had on her personal computer, which included searches like how to get away with murder and what kind of insane am I? So sad. Which is sad, yeah, because she obviously knew that something was happening inside of her. Something was not right. Yeah. And because she didn't really understand it, she didn't think to reach out for help. And if she would have, then, you know, would we even be here talking about this, you know? Well, she said that she did try to tell her parents once, Mm. but it was, like, later at night and her parents are just, like, thinking, like, yeah, how, like, every kid is like, oh, there's someone, something under my bed or whatever it may be. They're like, it's just a nightmare whatever. Like, go back to sleep. It's fine. But, like, she's actually hallucinating or having these delusions whatever it may be whichever one but she's getting dismissed because she's 12 and that would be a normal thing yeah to have those just generalized fears yeah not realizing and that's a difficult position to be put in as a parent i feel like there would be a certain amount of guilt you would feel after the fact knowing that you kind of maybe saw some signs but dismissed it as just regular regular behavior Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and knowing that you could have possibly prevented this really traumatic incident for this girl and her family so many people yeah well and even you know morgan and anissa themselves right in their families yeah they also found emails between morgan and anissa where Morgan was instructing Anissa to clean out her browser history. Again, just one of those little details where they knew some things, but other things just, you know, they're 12 years old. So, in Wisconsin, any child as young as 10 must be tried as an adult for this type of crime. So, because they were 12 years old at the time, they had to be tried as adults. During her trial, Morgan was diagnosed with early onset schizophrenia, which is really rare for someone her age, but her family later revealed that her father also had schizophrenia and he, I guess, was hospitalized as a teenager because of that. But, right, and the, but they, they caught it early, which mm-hmm. is obviously the best case scenario. Right, because then and, you can treat it. Right, and like what I heard is he... He'd say, like, you just learn to live with it as you mm-hmm. do. He, he said that he would be driving and he'd look in his rear view mirror and mirror mm-hmm. mirror and see like the, some sort of devil sitting in the back of his car. But he, like, is old enough and, like, knows everything, like, understands. Has lived with what, it long enough right, to he, know. He knows what's going on. He's like, yeah. I know that that's not real. Like, I know that this is just what my brain is doing. Like, on a very smaller scale, like, with OCD, it's like, as you learn to live with it, you're like, okay, like, I know that this is irrational. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that it seems very real, but I'm not going to give into it because I know that that's just only going to make it worse. Yeah. That is where I was like, and I obviously I, I do not want to put any blame on the father whatsoever. Mm-hmm. My only thought is like, did you know it was hereditary? Like, were you just really like in denial, hoping that it wasn't? Yeah. Or I, I can't imagine like if your kid likes spooky stuff mm-hmm. and is a little bit more into it than usual like okay great yeah what do you have to question right like that's just a human thing to do yeah like everybody's hobbies are different and interests and whatever it may be everyone is so different but then to like know that like what you suffer with Mm -hmm. i would just I feel like it would always <clears throat> kind of be in the back of your mind like, as right. a parent, right? Like, 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 is this normal behavior like, or is she... You're kind of reminding me of myself, My younger maybe. self. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I can't help but think of that. Yeah. And again, I can't, like, I, I, I absolutely do not want to put... Yeah, any blame on, on the father. Because right. that's just terrible. But it's hard to even put blame on Morgan herself. It's hard to... Right, it, How can she be held responsible? Also, it's a tricky... You can't swallow it. Yeah. Yeah. So, both girls ended up taking a plea deal. Morgan took a plea deal so that her insanity plea couldn't be challenged. So, she ultimately pleaded guilty to attempted first degree intentional homicide... And in turn, she was found not guilty due to mental disease or defect, and she was sentenced to a 40-year commitment in a state institution, which I feel like, honestly, is probably the best outcome out of that entire situation. Mm -hmm. I think anything else would have further Yeah, she definitely should not be, like, thrown in prison because you're not going to get any better whatsoever yeah at least this way she can get treatment Mm -hmm. and is also not you know out in society with the potential to harm somebody or herself so yeah to leave it unchecked and growing yeah so during morgan's sentencing she did cry and she apologized to peyton and her family and said that she never meant for any of this to happen Anissa was supposed to go to trial, but she also took a last-minute plea deal. She pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of second-degree intentional homicide, and as part of her deal, a jury would hear her insanity defense and decide whether or not they believed that she... Mm -hmm. Decide whether or not they believe she could be held criminally responsible. And in 2017... A jury found Anissa not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect, and she was sentenced to a 25-year commitment in a state institution. But Anissa was actually released on good behavior back in 2021, meaning she only served a few few years out of that 25-year sentence. She was required to move in with her father after being released. Peyton's family obviously wasn't incredibly happy with this, I mean, they were still a little bit worried that she might pose a a risk to the public, Mm -hmm. but they are thankful that she did receive treatment and that Anissa agreed to GPS monitoring and is also required to avoid any contact with Peyton until at least 2039. It also seems that Morgan has been getting the help she needs. When she was evaluated by her doctor, She was also diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder, which is a type of behavioral disorder. Mm -hmm. And that shows up in, like, a child's hostility towards others. And it was also revealed that she had actually been suffering vivid hallucinations since she was only three years old. Yeah. Because they asked her when the first time she experienced it was, and she, like, held up three fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Which is terrifying. Really. Horrifying. It really, really is. Like, that's your normal. 
You know what I mean? Right. You know nothing outside of that. Right. And, like, she was both hallucinating and having delusions. Mm -hmm. And, like, the combo, that's the worst case scenario. And, yeah. like, I feel like I just also want to, like, clear up that hallucinating is not, like, I took mushrooms and I see, like, a flower growing out of the couch or <laughs> whatever it is. Like, you can hallucinate by seeing something, but, like, you can also, like, feel something. Like, she would feel something, like, biting her. My or, God. like, like people feel bugs on themselves. Yeah. Or, you know, auditory hallucina mm -hmm. hallucinating is, like, the biggest thing. And it varies a lot. And But just hearing voices. Yeah. Which I can't imagine, like... I mean, some people have, like, that internal dialogue. I just found out that some people don't have that, which blows my mind. Like, you talk to yourself in your head, right? All the All time. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's how I am, too. But I can't imagine hearing a voice inside my head that's not me. You right. know what I mean? Right. The disassociation that would go along with that, like, feeling like you don't even own your own body or your own mind. Right. That's like, a scary thought. And I think it's especially interesting to think about the fact that that's all she's ever known. It's not like yeah. she's had a quote-unquote normal... Right. It's not like she suddenly went into psychosis one day and that's what changed everything. Right. And, like, the vast majority of people who are diagnosed, it's, like, later. And, like, mm -hmm. like either late teens or to as early an adult. 30s. Yeah. yeah. So they kind of know yeah. what it's like to be quote unquote normal and then to like grow into that but then to have in Morgan's case like that's just your life yeah and there's you know that's all you know yeah and there's and no escape you probably assume that other people everybody's like that right because why would you not right yeah it's just it's honestly sad and the whole thing is very sad after years of healing um peyton did do an interview with abc in 2019 she said she's doing really well and she even expressed gratitude for this traumatic experience she said it actually inspired her to pursue a career in medicine she said quote without this situation i wouldn't be who i am She's now in college, and she just wants to put everything behind her and live her life normally. And I just have to say, 12-year-old Peyton is a fucking badass, bro. She now, all, all time. Oh, yeah. But being able to pull yourself <sighs> out of that and... Oh, that is amazing. Bad bitch alert. Yeah. <sighs> so, that's... All I got for you. Do you have anything to add? Slender Man is not real. Um, don't yeah. do anything. Don't murder like people. That. Otherwise, we will talk about you. <laughs> We're gonna judge the fuck out of you, <laughs> as we should. <laughs> uh, well, that's all we have. Episode twelve, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Episode twelve. Wow. We've come so far. Wow. Thanks, everyone, so much for being here. Um, Let us know what you think. Yeah. Do you like me talking more? Should I, like, just <laughs> shut up? <laughs> no. Should I just go back to my... This was so much oh. nicer. Honestly, it really was. It was great. I did want to say, though, before we ended, that mm -hmm. if people want to... If people want to hear us talk about a specific topic, I'm going to make sure to set up an email that they can email us at, and that, but that will just be for our lovely Patreons if we ever get any. <laughs> <coughs> One day, maybe, maybe I'll sign up. <laughs> I'll never tell you. <laughs> I'll just secretly, you know what, that's get all of, like, pick all the topics. <laughs> that's what any best friend would do. <laughs> so yeah we'll make sure to have the linky link posted somewhere um i'm i still haven't quite figured out how to do all that but <laughs> i'll have it somewhere 
and you can go check that out. Other than that, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week, and remember to always keep, keep it spooky! spooky.